pharmaceuticals, illegal pharmaceuticals was a major issue. In fact, when the, there was over $2 million worth of pharmaceuticals found in the place. We still often ask, why was there six pints of ether in the kitchen? Why was there demo, demoral, quaalude, steroids, injectable items being disseminated or dispensed, rather, by non-health professionals? I'm a social worker. I am, I'm an MSW and a clinical social worker. I work at USC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. I've been in research for over 11 years in the healthcare profession. I also work at California Hospital as a clinical social worker. What I see every day as a social worker is reflective of what I see in my community. And allowing to have a full line of alcohol will increase domestic violence, it will increase loitering, drunkenness, inebriation, and also lewd acts that occurred in this particular area. As we all know, we are in an economic crisis. People are losing their jobs as we speak. And allowing alcohol is not gonna help those who lose their jobs and go there to drink because they're depressed. We've witnessed women, a woman shot in the parking lot because of domestic violence. There's a photograph there. We, we witnessed executions. The neighbors have witnessed screaming, yelling in the parking lot. We requested 15 years ago state certified security for the protection of the patrons, for the protection of the community. To this day, the proprietor continues to hire his own staff as security. As a Boyle Heights Neighborhood Stakeholders Association member, I would like to urge you and implore you to please take into consideration the quality of life in Boyle Heights and to preserve what is already there. We need the housing, and he has demolished the housing. He owns resident 215, 217, and 223 Ches Rose Lane. Those are his residential units. They look like shanty town shacks. The people who used to live there were family members who, although they didn't have a lot of money, they still were able to keep the place very respectable and quaint. It is, it, for those homeowners who are still there, what he has done has digressed the property value of our community. And we don't want that anymore. We want to work together with all the departments, with the elected officials, with business owners in the community and the residents and the merchants to bring a better quality of life and a better economic structure to our neighborhood. We don't need any more. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. I would like to state for the record yes. that uh, today we are working with the Hollenbeck and LAPD and the Vice Unit and the police does not, the police department does not support any more alcohol licenses in our community. I think there was a police officer here. I believe he may be. Uh, he may be coming uh, to testify a little bit later. So. Well, yeah, and, and one last thing, I just think, you know, I, I respect what Ms. Chang has done. She's trying to do a diligent job. You know, as community members, we've been dealing with this for so long. And when I did approach Ms. Chang on the phone, and I called her, and I know she's supposed to be objective, she stated to me, Ms. Diaz, this is like a court of law. When the judge makes the decision, that's the decision. Now, my response to that is that our taxes their salaries. This is not a court of law. This is a process whereby land use issues are decided on. Commissioner Marquez, it is a little bit like a court of law because you do get to appeal. True. Sure. But her decision is not a judge's decision. But I respect what she's done. I mean, we have to work together. Thank you, Ms. Diaz. address the, the Commissioner Lowe speaking, the issue of demolition of the four single family dwelling units on Cheese Lane. We've heard testimony today that the, the Department of Building and Safety states that 288 spaces are more than adequate. 
and they actually are in excess of the 246. I believe that was the number, 246 or 244. 244 parking spaces that would be required for the types of uses that are in existence at the El Mercado as well as proposed. Why did staff change its position from its earlier CEP determination? Because the condition number seven of the earlier CEP determination prohibited demolition of those units. Why at this time would staff be supporting demolition of those units? Which, by the way, are, were built in 1908, 1909, 1908 and 1912 respectively for the properties located at 211, 215, 217, and 223 Cheese Road. Okay, good afternoon again. Sue Cheng from Planning Department. Um, at the hearing, the lack of parking spaces were very hot issue. The residents along Cheese Lane, um, I got a lot of complaints. People illegally parked their cars. Uh, Cheese Lane is less than 20 foot wide roadway. I believe it's up ranging between 18 to 19. Although the parking situation there is only permitted for residents, people illegally park there to have access to the site. Um, Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is there, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a preferential parking? There's a preferential parking. That is correct. They, yeah. they call it preferential parking. But you know, uh, the testimony at the hearing stated that uh, people ignore, no matter what, whether you know they have a sign up there or not, they just they, they just to do it. Yeah, okay. Commissioner Marquez, and that's an issue of um, enforcement. Right, right. So uh, they they concern about you know lack of parking spaces on the side. That's why people try to illegally park on the alley, which is known as uh, the Cheeseboro Lane. Second of all, at the time. Um, the applicant did not present the number of required parking spaces. I don't believe, I don't believe still they do not know how many parking spaces are required legally by the code for the proposed project. We do need uh, some confirmation from the Department of Building and Safety. Um, Ms. Chen, Chief Commissioner, I was speaking again. The question is, why did you change the planning department's original determination, which is condition number seven in the original, I believe condition number seven, uh, that prevents, the, that explicitly prohibits the demolition of those four dwelling units. I mean, that is totally inconsistent with the general plan and the community plan. It is zoned RD 1.5, there is a continued continuance of encroachment of a parking use within a residential neighborhood, a single low density. So that is my question. What changed? Aside from the, I recognize you're trying to address what has been presented as an impact in terms of parking needs, excess parking, but if they already need why that alter, why that route of demolition of four existing dwelling units? That's what, I, what I'm trying to address. Um, parking, as you know, is not permitted by right in residential or not. Um, it's only permitted by a conditional use with the proper findings. Uh, just like uh, we approved the parking lots in uh, for parking lot B and C in 2003. Same applies to this extension. I. I uh, had a testimony that the community uh, concerned about lack of parking, and at that time, um, and also this extension and renovation uh, obviously increased the scale footage of the use. Uh, I believe they have some extension in the restaurant, which will generate tremendous of uh, uh, parking need. At that time, um, whether or not how many parking spaces are actually required by code. Um, I still don't know. The applicant said it's 248 something. Uh, it needs to be revisited by the building and safety. In fact, 
the code required parking spaces are really minimal parking spaces. So when I had a testimony from the community, this side is really, you know, they have a lot of problem about parking generated by this use. So uh, in order to allow just a more uniform development, as you know, parking class C, uh, it's only half of them is being used for the parking, and also usually half is residential.